Previously on Aaron Turner's Game Reviews. Ah, this is nice. I finally got my review of Mario Kart Super Circuit out of the way, so I can just sit back and relax. Not so fast. Who are you? The name's Mitchell Donner, and I've been a longtime fan of your game reviews for a while now, but it appears lately you've been making a few mistakes. I'm gonna put an end to this madness. Do you realize how ridiculous this is? You're kidnapping me because you don't like my opinions on video games. You're insane. All right, time to web you up. Whoa, wait, hold on. I got a better idea. Oh, come on, this is bullshit. I'd rather be in jail. Knuckles, what the hell did you do to make the cops come? You told them about Mitchell? It was an accident. Look, Aaron, I'm sorry, but me, Sonic, and Tails are getting the fuck out of Dodge. Oh, we have just received word that the police have found no evidence of Mitchell Donner being in the house. Oh, dear God. Oh, hey, Aaron. Just wondering if you've heard anything about Mitchell. I don't really care myself, but Tails wanted me to ask. Oh, uh, no, not really. I know as much as you do, I guess. I mean, who knows what that guy could be doing right now. So yeah, I don't plan on reviewing that game, but I just thought I'd mention it. What the hell? Ah, oh, shit, the power must have went out. Oh my god, Mitchell, you did this? Yes, I did. It was a ruse to get you to come down here. All right, Mitchell, that's it. I've had enough of this nonsense. You and me, right now. Let's go. Oh, I'd love to see that. All right, let's go. Ugh. Hey, what are you doing? I'm calling the police. After all, you're still wanted. All right, you just sit tight, the police are on their way, and then this whole kidnapping thing will be behind both of us. Mitchell, it's not about being old enough. I've told you time and time again, I don't want you making game reviews on YouTube. Fine, I won't. I'll never make game reviews on YouTube, ever. program for news regarding not-so-notorious criminal Mitchell Donner, who has recently been taken into custody. Mr. Turner, who captured Mitchell, was given a $500 reward. Why only $500? Well, as it turns out, nobody really gives a shit about this case. I mean, it's pretty ridiculous when you think about it. Some guy breaks into someone's house and kidnaps them so they can take over their game reviews. Sounds pretty fucking stupid if you ask me. Anyway, things are starting to calm down for Aaron as he prepares for his next game review. <laughs> Hey everyone, my name is Aaron Turner and I'm in a good mood today because finally I was able to put all of this Mitchell Donner kidnapping stuff behind me. And as a way to celebrate, I thought I could review another Mario Kart game, seeing as I couldn't review Double Dash because I was... Oh yeah, I was in a mental asylum, right. Anyway, today I'm going to be reviewing what many people consider the best Mario Kart game, Mario Kart DS. So I guess at this point they decided to drop the subtitles and just name the games after the console it was released on. Okay then. Mario Kart DS is also what I consider to be the start of the modern Mario Kart games. This is also evident by the logo change. So first of all, before I get into any of the game modes, I want to first talk about the controls, items, as well as the character and cart selection. Now I've had problems with each of the previous Mario Kart games with how they've controlled. Super Mario Kart especially with its horrible turning and drifting. The B button being used for acceleration and the A button being used for items. Mario Kart 64 improved upon this by switching some of the button placement and having better turning, although the drifting still wasn't great. Super Circuit did improve the drifting slightly, but still played pretty similar. 
And finally, Double Dash did perfect the drifting, however the turning could have still used some work, and they made the item buttons X and Y instead of the shoulder button. So what does Mario Kart DS do? Well, I'm happy to say that for the first time, I have zero complaints about the controls. They finally were able to perfect it. You have complete control with the turning, the drifting is great, and the shoulder button is used for items. Speaking of items, DS brings back most of the items from Double Dash along with two new items, the Bullet Bill and the Blooper. The Bullet Bill gives you a massive boost and will often put you ahead of everyone else depending on when you use it. The Blooper squirts a bunch of black ink on the screen to block your vision, but I think everyone can agree that the Blooper doesn't really have a huge impact, especially on the DS which has two screens. Speaking of which, the touch screen is used to see what place you're in as well as give you a map. You can have a complete view of the shape of the track or a more accurate view of where you are along with all the other racers and obstacles. The idea of the touchscreen map in Mario Kart DS was a brilliant idea. Now the previous games had maps, and I don't know about you, but I never really found them all that helpful, especially in the case of Super Mario Kart where the map was just a distraction. However, with Mario Kart DS having a giant map on the bottom screen, it acts as a really helpful tool rather than as a distraction. In fact, it's so helpful that you're able to complete a race without even having to look at the top screen. I'm serious, that's how good this map is. Alright, now let's get into the character roster. This is is the only modern Mario Kart game where I don't have any problems with the character roster. Double Dash had some characters that just didn't make much sense to include, although to be fair that could be because Double Dash had a partner system and they struggled to come up with pairings. However, Mario Kart DS trimmed the fat of Double Dash and only included characters that felt right to include. DS has the same characters that Mario Kart 64 and Super Circuit had, and only brings back two characters from Double Dash, that being Daisy and Waluigi, which does make sense, although personally I would have liked to see Birdo, Bowser Jr., and Diddy Kong also make a return, but it's not a huge deal. However, Mario Kart DS introduces two brand new characters, the first one being Dry Bones. Yeah, it's kind of weird that they decided to replace Koopa Troopa with his literal skeleton, but hey, I won't complain, he's fucking cool. However, he's not the best character in the game. That would go to the other new character they added, Rob. Yeah, they actually added Rob in this game. Now, for those of you who aren't aware, Rob stands for Robotic Operating Buddy and was sold as an accessory for the NES in order to boost sales. It's such a cool idea to have him as a playable character in this game. Now, just like Double Dash, each character has their own unique carts. However, in Mario Kart DS, you have three different carts to each one character. One is a standard cart with the other two being unique. Now, there's 36 carts in the game, so I'm not going to go over every single one, but I'll mention my favorite cart for each character. For Mario, I like the Shooting Star. Luigi, I definitely go for the Poltergeist 4000, which I think is definitely the coolest cart in the game. For Peach, I'd probably go for the Light Tripper, and for Yoshi, the Egg One. For Toad, I'd probably just go for the Standard Cart, and for Donkey Kong, I'd say the Rambi Rider, which is a cool inclusion of Rambi from Donkey Kong Country. Wario is best with the Brute, and for Bowser, I'd definitely go with the Hurricane, which is based off his Koopa Clown car. With Daisy, I'd say the Power Flower, and for Dry Bones, obviously the Dry Bomber, which is considered the best cart in the game. For Waluigi, I'd maybe go with the Gold Mantis, and finally for Rob, I'd go with the Rob BLS. Alright, now that the selection part of the game is out of the way, I can finally talk about the game modes, of course starting with the Grand Prix. The Mushroom Cup starts with your basic warm-up track in Figure 8 Circuit. It's not the worst starting track in the series, but it's not the best. I think Luigi's Circuit from Double Dash was better. I was never a huge fan of Yoshi Falls, but it's a little more interesting than Figure 8 Circuit. Cheap Cheap Beach is a track I really like, it's one of the better beach-paced tracks in the series. However, the Mushroom Cup keeps getting better with the last track, Luigi's Mansion, an entire track based on Luigi's Mansion. You start by going into the mansion itself and then go out to the cemetery into the forest with a bunch of walking trees, all complemented with great music. What an awesome track, one of the game's best. Now unfortunately, the Flower Cup opens with one of my least favorite tracks in the game, Desert Hills. I don't hate this track, but it's just kind of boring compared to the rest. Delfino Square, however, is great. Another track based on Mario Sunshine, although honestly it doesn't really look like Mario Sunshine. You race through the town with a few shortcuts and can break some crates open for items. Then you have Waluigi Pinball, which is generally considered the best track in the game, and I couldn't agree more. You're racing around in a fucking pinball machine set to great music. What more is there to say? 
the flower cup ends with shroom ridge which is the obligatory traffic setting to be honest this is one of if not the weakest traffic course in the series again i certainly don't hate it but the other ones like toad's turnpike mushroom city mushroom bridge and moonview highway were all way better the star cup starts with dk pass which is another great track it's not the best DK track in the series, but it's certainly not the worst. It's basically like DK Mountain with no cannon and if it had snow. Next up is TikTok Clock, another banger of a track, an entire track based off Mario 64. I especially like how the gears move in different directions in each lap. Next is Mario Circuit, which is easily the worst track in the Star Cup. I mean, it's just a generic circuit track with pipes and piranha plants. However, the Star Cup ends on a really strong note with Airship Fortress. This is based off the airship levels in Mario Bros. 3. You start off dodging bullet bills and wrenches before making your way inside the ship, and then you get blasted to another part of the fortress. What a blast, easily one of the best tracks in the game. The Special Cup opens with Wario Stadium, and this one is far superior to the Wario Stadium in Mario Kart 64. There's a bunch of jumps and boost pads to go over. Once again, this is one of the best tracks in the game. Peach Gardens is of course one of the most iconic tracks in all of Mario Kart. It might be my favorite Peach track in the whole series. Now we come to two of the staple tracks in the series, Bowser Castle and Rainbow Road. Bowser Castle is really good. Is it the best Bowser Castle track? I'm not sure about that, but it's certainly up there. I especially like this spinning tube you drive on. However, in regards to Rainbow Road, it's honestly pretty disappointing. For an entry with such creative and dare I say some of the best tracks the series has to offer, its Rainbow Road is unfortunately very lacking. There's not really much noteworthy aspects of this Rainbow Road. You go through a couple loops and that's pretty much it. There's even a part that's pretty similar to Double Dash's Rainbow Road with a bunch of boost pads. It's honestly pretty lazy. But overall, I am very happy with these tracks. Sure, some of them are kind of generic and boring like Figure 8 Circuit, Desert Hills, and Mario Circuit, but I don't hate playing any of them. However, that's not all the tracks the game has to offer. Mario Kart DS introduced something new that would forever change the series going forward. Mario Kart DS added four retro cups, which each bring back a selection of tracks from previous games. Mario Kart DS in particular has the most balanced selection of retro tracks in the series, considering that there's four tracks per cup, and there's only four games to choose from. Now since I've already talked about each of these tracks, I'm gonna go over the Retro Cups in a different way than I do with the Nitro Cups. I'm gonna list each track in the cup, and then I'll give my overall thoughts on the whole cup. So let's go over each Retro Cup, starting with the Shell Cup. The Shell Cup has SNES's Mario Circuit 1, N64's Moo Moo Farm, GBA's Peach Circuit, and GameCube's Luigi Circuit. Okay, yeah, I'm just gonna say it. This cup sucks and is probably the worst cup in the game. There's way too many circuit tracks. There's no variety. I'm perfectly fine with Moo Moo Farm, but would it have killed you to pick literally any other course from Super Circuit or Double Dash? All right, let's just see what the Banana Cup has in store. Banana Cup gives us SNES's Donut Plains 1, N64's Frappe Snowland, GBA's Bowser Castle 2, and GameCube's Baby Park. Okay, there we go. This cup is much better. I've always loved Frappe Snowland and Bowser Castle 2, so those are great. Although honestly, I prefer Frappe Snowland and Mario Kart 64. I don't know, the DS version always seemed extra slippery for some reason. The Leaf Cup gives us SNES's Koopa Beach 2, N64's Chaco Mountain, GBA's Luigi Circuit, and GameCube's Mushroom Bridge. This is probably the best Retro Cup. Luigi Circuit looks even better than it did in Super Circuit, Chaco Mountain is of course great, and Koopa Beach 2 is not a bad track. And finally, the Lightning Cup gives us SNES's Chaco Island 2, N64's Banshee Boardwalk, GBA's Sky Garden, and GameCube's Yoshi Circuit. First of all, Sky Garden? Fuck yeah, they brought back the best track in Super Circuit. Second of all, Banshee Boardwalk is much better compared to the N64 original. It's mostly because the controls are much better so you aren't constantly falling off. Now I really don't like Chaco Island 2 because the road is so tight and there's so much dirt that slows you down. I actually think Super Circuit did this track a lot more justice than DS did. So you might have noticed that I haven't mentioned any of the Double Dash tracks yet. Well, that's because in my opinion, the Double Dash selection is extremely disappointing. First of all, two circuit tracks? I mean, I like Luigi Circuit and Yoshi Circuit, but did you have to choose both? And I'm not a huge fan of Baby Park already, and they even changed the number of laps from 7 in the original to 5 in the DS version. And then you got Mushroom Bridge, which I do like, but why this track? The game already has a traffic course in it, so pick something else. 
Overall, the SNES selection is whatever. I'm pretty satisfied with the selection of N64 and GBA tracks, but the GameCube selection is pretty bad. However, that doesn't change the fact that the concept of retro tracks was a really good inclusion. So that was the Grand Prix mode, but let's go over the other modes. I can actually talk about the other modes this time around because it doesn't require multiplayer. There's of course Time Trial, which I have nothing to say about, but I can finally talk about Battle Mode. Battle Mode was in the previous games, and in Mario Kart DS you can either do Balloon Battle or Shine Runners. There's six courses to choose from. First, you can battle on top of a Nintendo DS system. Double Dash had a similar course where you battled on a GameCube. There's also Twilight House, which is fucking awesome, Palm Shore based on Mario 64 DS, and Tart Top, which is a pastry-based course. The other two courses are brought back from previous games, Block Fort from Mario Kart 64 and Pipe Plaza from Double Dash, which I really like. There's two battle mode options you can choose from. Balloon Battle gives you five balloons attached to your cart and has you using items to battle against other racers. The last one standing wins or the last team standing. The other style is Shine Runners where you battle over how many shines each racer can get. This can also be done in teams. I've always preferred Shine Runners to Balloon Battle, but that's just my preference. Battle mode in general is something that I never dabbled in too much because I always preferred playing races. Mario Kart DS also introduces two brand new modes. The first is Versus mode, which would go on to become a staple of the series. It's like an improved version of Quick Run from Super Circuit, with even more customization options. You can select your class and the difficulty of the CPU. You can choose which track to play, or you can set them to play either in order or random. You can also set the rules to either be based on how many wins you get, or how many races you do. And you can also just play with free rules. And finally, you can also play as teams if you want. Versus mode is my go-to mode when playing any of the modern Mario Kart games. The customization options are great, and versus mode is the definitive way to play races. Once you complete Grand Prix mode, there's really no reason to choose to play it over versus mode. The other new mode is Mission Mode. This is a single-player adventure mode where you complete various tasks like drive through gates in order, collect a certain amount of coins, or use items to hit a bunch of enemies. There's also boss fights. Yes, you heard that right, this is the only Mario Kart game with bosses. The bosses are the same ones from Super Mario 64 DS, but it's pretty creative how these boss fights work. Some of them require a race, however with most of them you have to utilize the items and hit the boss with a specific item. I really have to give them credit for this, this is a single player campaign for a Mario Kart game that's primarily meant to be played with others. It's amazing that they took the time to make mission mode. Now I haven't completed each level yet because personally it was never a mode I really enjoyed, but I do really appreciate the idea of mission mode. Unfortunately, to the dismay of many fans of mission mode, it was never brought back for any future games, which is a shame. In conclusion, this is a fantastic racing game, and I'd argue Mario Kart DS is the most revolutionary game in the series. The amount of content that was added changed the future of Mario Kart. Stuff like Retro Tracks and Versus Mode would become staples of the series. Not only that, but the track selection is amazing, specifically the Nitro Cups. Luigi's Mansion, Delfino Square, Waluigi Pinball, Tick Tock Clock, Airship Fortress, and Peach Gardens are some of the best tracks in the entire series. The controls were finally perfected, the addition of the touchscreen map is a great tool, and the soundtrack is also great. I really want to give it a perfect score because I have a hard time thinking of problems, but unfortunately the one small thing that holds it back is the retro track selection. Like I said, the idea of retro tracks is awesome, and I will forever be grateful for Mario Kart DS introducing the concept, but unfortunately the selection could be a lot better. There's quite a few tracks that I'm happy with, but there's some, mainly the Double Dash tracks, that don't make sense to include. This is why I'm going to give Mario Kart DS a 9.5 out of 10. Mario Kart DS is one of the best racing games ever made, and I personally think it's the best handheld racing game ever made. Many people consider it the best Mario Kart game, even better than Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which has a smorgasbord of content. That just goes to show you how much of an impact Mario Kart DS had on the series. I may not personally think it's the best Mario Kart, but it's certainly one of my favorite games of all time. That was great. I should review another really good DS game. Oh, perfect! Sonic Rush! Huh? What's this? We now have more news regarding not-so-notorious criminal Mitchell Donner. It's now been confirmed that Mitchell Donner was given a sentence of five years in prison. Interestingly enough, Mr. Donner had very little to say in court. 
The only thing he said during the whole trial was, Yes, Your Honor, I am Mitchell Donner. Just when you thought this case couldn't get any dumber. <sighs> this just keeps getting better and better.